equipment fitted in a cruiser for surface detection and low angle gunnery, let us look at the job to be done. Here is our ship, a modified Fiji class cruiser. Here is the enemy, say the German cruiser Hipper, not yet in sight owing to poor visibility. We want first to have warning of her presence, then to know her bearing and her range accurately enough for gunfire. For dealing with an enemy on the surface, the ship is fitted with two separate types of RDF sets, known as types 273 and 284. The first of these, type 273, here is its aerial lantern, gives warning of the presence of any ship within a considerable distance, which may be as far away as the horizon. Type 273 is kept sweeping all round the horizon. And when a surface craft is detected, its range and bearing is passed to the tactical plot. This consists of a chart upon which is shown the position of our own ship and the position of the detected surface vessel with reference to ourselves is marked in from the information which has just been supplied by Type 273. By continuing to plot the enemy's range and bearing, her course and speed can be deduced. This information enables the captain of our ship, or admiral of the squadron, to maneuver into the best position to attack. The second RDF set, Type 284, here are its aerials on the DCT, which has a rather shorter range, is now used to obtain for the guns a continuous series of ranges of the target selected. Type 273, meanwhile, having done its job in detecting the enemy, is continuing its all-round sweep to ensure that our ship is not surprised by a second enemy coming from another direction. Although, as you have just learnt, 273 is used for all-round warning and 284 for obtaining gunnery ranges, it may happen that we are in a position to open fire before Type 284, with its shorter range, has picked up the target. In this case, Type 273 must provide the accurate gunnery ranges until 284 is ready to take over. For this purpose, an accurate ranging unit called L-18 worked by Type 273, is fitted in the transmitting station. While L-18 with 273 is employed in giving gunnery ranges, it is of course obvious that 273 must temporarily abandon its function of all-round warning search. Now let's see how the equipment is used. The principal control officer tells the tactical plot to order the 273 to sweep either all round or over a broad arc. Thus. Bridge plot. Tell 273. Sweep from 310 to 270. When an echo is detected, a series of bearings and ranges is passed verbally to the tactical plot. Thus. 273 plot, echo bearing 116, range 27,000. The plotting officer passes the report to the bridge. The captain now decides that he must measure the enemy's course and speed and get into the best position to open fire. He maneuvers his ship accordingly. Meanwhile, the captain's sight is put on the RDF bearing of the enemy and the ship's main armament is ordered to follow his sight. For example, lookout bearing green 4-5. The guns are thus trained on the correct lookout bearing, ready to open fire should the enemy then be sighted visually. The Type 273 may be ordered either to watch or to hold the echo. 
In either case, a series of bearings and ranges is passed from it to the plot. Here, each position is plotted. When joined together, these make a track chart of the enemy's course. This chart can be inspected by the captain or PCO from the bridge through a hole in the deck. The plot now gives the course and speed of the target. This information is passed to the TS where it is needed for gunnery control. The target can thus be followed or tracked without being seen and the necessary preliminary information passed to the armament which is now ready to open fire. When the order gunnery ranging is passed to the 273, the operator holds the target by watching his echo and glancing at his special bearing transmission unit. He repeats the order by telephone to the operator of the L18 ranging tube in the TS. The 273 operator now turns the strobe setting knob on his indicator unit so as to place a bright spot of light, called a strobe, onto the echo. He then reports to the ranging tube operator, strobe set. This operator, once he has observed the echo indicated by the strobe, aligns the marker pip appearing on the enlarged part of the trace with the indicated echo. This is done by turning a handle in the in position on the RTU, which is mounted on the L18 panel. He then reports back target identified to the 273 operator, who, on hearing this report, turns his strobe setting knob so as to remove the strobe from the echo. Returning to the L18, the movement of aligning the marker pip with the ranging handwheel in automatically transmits range to an ordinary range receiver and to a blue pointer on a matching dial in the TS. This pointer in turn has another black pointer kept matched to it by an operator on the fire control table. Thus. 273 range is continuously fed to the table and thence away to the guns. This done, the L18 operator releases his handwheel to the out position. When the handwheel is in this position, the rate of change of range as estimated by the fire control table moves the marker pip along with the echo. If pip and echo fail to tally, the operator has only got to move his handwheel to adjust any errors in the table rate. His hand wheel moves a pencil on the range plot so that errors of range rate can be measured and corrected. The second operator's job is to report shell splash echoes as they fall short, over, or straddle. Our cruiser is also fitted with type 284M4. With this set, the aerials are fixed to the director control tower and rotate with it, being trained by the director trainer inside. Thus, it will obtain echoes from any target on the same bearing as the director. The primary duty of type 284 is to measure the range of other ships for the main armament. The 284 ranging procedure is best shown by an example. The plot passes the bearing of the target as reported by 273 to the bridge where it is set on the captain's sight. If visibility permits, the target will then be seen. The captain's sight drives an evershed in the director control tower.
By following this, the director control tower is trained onto the target which will appear in the director trainer's glasses. He reports by telephone. Track that target! The 284 operator hears this, and as his aerials are looking in the same direction, he will see the echo on his tube and report echo, adding its range. For example, echo, range 151. The second operator sets this range on a transmitter in the 284 office and makes a cut switch. This range appears on a matching dial in the TS and is applied to the fire control table. In addition to ranging, type 284M4 may be used for searching and for directing fire against unseen targets. Suppose the director has been ordered to carry out a sweep, say from green 160 to red 20. The 284 aerials being fixed to the director control tower rotate with it. As soon as an echo is detected, the 284 operator watching the tube will report echo to the director trainer adding its range. The 284 operator must control the director control tower until it and the 284 aerials are pointing directly at the target. To do this, the operator moves the clutch on his bearing transmission unit to the position marked office controlling. This rings a gong in the director, which trains in accordance with the movement of an Evershed indicator. This Evershed is controlled by the 284 operator turning the hand wheel of his BTU. The operator continues to turn and the director to follow until the twin echoes on his tube appear as a single one. The director is then on the target, whose bearing and range should be passed to the plot. The target can be held by ordering the TS to control the director as for ordinary indirect fire. When this is ordered, the line spotting operator in the TS watches his remote bearing tube and turns his line spotting hand wheel to balance the twin echoes. By doing this, he keeps the director on its invisible target just as well as if the director trainer's eye could see it. The following diagrams will show types 273 and 284 used for their more normal duties of warning and ranging. But remember that they can do each other's work to a large extent. The target echo is picked up by 273 and reported to the tactical plot together with its bearing and range. The plot informs the bridge. When a series of reports have been received from 273, the target's course and speed obtained from plotting those reports are passed by the plot to the bridge. The ship's armament is then put on the target by the bridge ordering it either to train onto an alarm bearing or to follow the captain's sight upon which this bearing has previously been set. Bearing from the captain's sight is transmitted to an Evershed in the director control tower. By following this, the director control tower is trained on the target, which will appear in the director crew's glasses. At the same time, the 284 aerials are brought on and the 284 operator sees the echo. Its range is measured and transmitted to the TS. The TS also receives line-of-sight training of the target 
and its course and speed from the director control tower, helped in turn by the tactical plot. The necessary calculations can now be made, and the gun training and elevation sent to the receivers at the gun. If 273 is used for ranging, the target is indicated to the L18 in the TS by means of a strobe. The L18 ranging unit then feeds range via a matching dial to the fire control table, which calculates the training and elevation for the guns. For blind fire, the 284 can control the director and keep it on the target. Alternatively, the same job can be done by the 284 remote bearing tube in the TS. The gunnery fire control system then works as before in spite of the target being invisible. to see how both these sets are used in action. PCO? Sir? I think we must be within about 15 miles of these raiders now. 273 hasn't picked up any echo yet, sir. What arc of sweep? We got 273 on now. Total 5 to 105, sir. Well, I think these Germans prefer the round to the westward. we better increase the sweep more to port. Aye, aye, sir. Four bridge plot. Plot, four bridge. 273 sweep from 285 to 105. Sweep from 285 to 105. Plot 273. Sweep from 285 to 105. Sweep from 285 to 105. I wish there's target left. What's the visibility? Well, I think it's more, better than about 4,000 yards, sir. Four bridge plot. 273 reports an echo bearing 317, 25,000. 273 reports echo bearing 317. Range 25,000 yards, sir. Only one? Only one, sir. All right, well, tell them to hold it and watch it. Watch there, Echo. Plot bridge. 273 to watch that Echo. Plot 273. Watch that Echo. Watch it, sir. Target. 315. Target 315 to 21,000. Target 310 to 20,000. Target 310 to 20,000. Plot bread. Target now 310 20,000. 310 20,000. Yes. What is its course and speed? Course 255, speed 20 knots. Put the armament on. Bearing 310. Range 20,000 now. Enemy speed, 20 knots. Uh, 
Armed force. Follow Eversham. Visibility range 200. Enemy course 255. Enemy speed 20. Alarm fort bearing red 30. Inclination 150. Left enemy speed 20. Alarm port. A PCO, with this patchy visibility, we might see any time. Hello? What's that? Chief Yeoman, look at that dark smudge to the right of that fog bank over there. Easy, Chief. Enemy in sight bearing red 3-0. Just coming in sight. Stand by. A PCO, make sure that 273 continues sweeping. Must try and find the other radar. You'll have to depend on 284 for your gunnery arranging for the present. Make sure 273 continues sweeping. 284 will be used for gunnery ranging. Range 185. Table tuned to 284. Ridge DCT, open fire. Open fire. By Jove, it's the Leipzig, all right. Shoot. 158. Suggest inclination 160 left, enemy speed 24. Short 400. Straddle. Hi, Joe, that's hit her all right. Blast that frog bank. Target obscured. Indirect fire. Tears control. Director on. 156. 156. Staring that fog and smoke. Not her again! Look! Echo lost her. Must have blown up. Check, check, check! There's still the other radar about somewhere. Is 273 still sweeping? Yes, sir. 273 is still sweeping.
to send three flat. Echo bearing 0120, 29,000. Echo bearing 010, range 29,000. Flatbread, Great, 273 reports New Echo, bearing 010, 29,000. New Echo, 010, 29,000. Yes. 273 has reported another Echo, sir, to starboard. Good. That must be the other radar. Pilot, all the course to starboard. Uh, Come on, starboard 20. 273. Hold the echo. DCT, look, RDF has picked up another echo, probably the other radar. Follow Everton. Stand by to engage. Clock 273. Hold that echo. Yes. Target large ship 012 27,000 First class bearing Block bridge Block. Ship bearing green to a range 27,000 Green to a 27,000 Yes Look out, bearing green to O. Set range two one O. Look out, bearing green to O. Range two seven O. Look out, bearing green to O. Range two seven O. Direct a sweep from green one O to green three O. Our PCO visibility is getting much better now. Still about six miles, I think, sir, but it's this patchy. I don't think we shall have to use flight far. Thank God for that. What's the range now? Range 19,000 yards, sir. Closing fast. All right. Well, we'll open fire at 12,000 yards or earlier if we see her. You'll better have 284 to get the armament on. You can have 273 for ranging. Echo range 187. 155 155 273 Gunnery Ranging Gunnery Ranging Strobe set Gunnery Ranging Target identified. Table tuned to two seven three. I suggest. Inclination, 150 right, enemy speed, 20. DCT for bridge, 6 inch on by RDF, good 273 range plot. Can I have a now, sir, range is down to 30,000 yards. 
Blind fire, sir. All right. Open fire. Six inch, open fire. Director, target. Director controlling. Seem to be straddling all right, sir. Are you sure? Yes, I can count some shorts and over, sir. Good for the RDF. We can't expect to be so lucky this time as we were with the last one. How's the range now? Down to 6,000, sir. Still closing. Talk. Stand by for your torpedoes. Already stopped, sir. How are you estimating the enemy's force and speed? Getting it all from the clock, sir. Torpedo off, sir. Fire torpedoes as soon as the sights come on. Straddle! have you got for your, for your torpedoes to run? Uh, five seconds to go, sir. Go ahead. 